Rambo swims on Landis, gets topside, Rambo scores! What's up everyone, especially Whip Snakes fans, because this one is for you. Also, the full TV schedule is finally here, so you can get your DVR set. Check the link down below for the full listings. Look, it's hard to win a championship. It's even harder to repeat. The Whip Snakes are going for a repeat this championship series, but their roster is gonna look a lot different than it did in 2019, especially on the offensive side of the ball. That's a nice way of putting it though. This Whip Snakes offense was gutted from the expansion draft. They waved goodbye to Drew Snyder, Connor Kelly, Ben Reeves, and Ryan Drenner. But Coach Stagnita put an emphasis on the core of this team by protecting every single defensive starter. So we're gonna cover both sides of the ball here. Offense with MVP Matt Rambo and defense with close defender Matt Dunn. Whipsnake's offense is going to have to replace 41 goals this season. That's right, they lost 41 goals with the departure of Kelly, Snyder, Drenner, and Reeves. But they have the MVP in Matt Rambo and they added Zed Williams in the entry draft who can do just about anything. And they have John Haas who had this insane goal in the championship game. And it's John Haas from Matt Rambo to give Whips the lead. And of course, two bomb king, Mike Chaninchuk. So with a reloaded offense, how are the Whip Snakes planning to repeat this season? Here is Matt Rambo. Be the best player right uh, I don't know if I'm the best player, but all I know is we got the best team, and that's all that matters. <laughs> John Hall's on the Whip Snakes brings everything you can want in a midi in one player. He can get back on defense, he can play wings, he gets all the tough ground balls, he sets picks. He's a great feeder, a great dodger, a great shooter. I think right now John Hall's might be one of the best middies in the league, and I think he's super underrated. So for me, I think John Halls has it all. He does it all. You saw it in the championship game when he came up in the biggest moments, and he's such a key to our offense, and you know, it's great having him on our side every single time. John Haas takes it around the crease. Haas topside, shoots, scores! Mike Chaninchuk is, you know, what does he bring to the Whip Snakes offense? Well, he brings a lot of things. One, he shoots the best two-pointer in the whole league. We saw that last year, he had the most two-pointer goals. Two, he can dodge down the alley, take a pull, take a short stick. Whoever's guarding him, he has a really good chance of beating him and having one of the best shooters in the league is always the best to have. And he's also a great feeder. He does a lot of no-look feed, so he's a very great player. and. You know, I love passing the ball when he rips the two-pointers. Lastly, uh, Zed Williams. Zed Williams is our new guy that we picked up, and over the last couple of weeks, we've been getting to know each other, you know, phone calls, Zooms, and I knew Zed from the past, so I'm super excited to play with him. I, I used to hate playing against him. He's powerful, he shoots the ball so hard, but what I'm most excited about is see what the crazy stuff he's gonna be doing, throwing behind the backs, in between the legs, so Zed is, you know, a huge pickup for the Whip Snakes to put him down and attack or midi. And, um, you know, he's powerful and he's a really hard matchup to cover. So, uh, good luck to a lot of defensemen covering Zed Williams because he is one of a kind and this league is going to see some crazy stuff. And I'm excited to be, you know, his teammate and line mate now. In 2020, you know, with the expansion draft, we lost Ryan Drenner, Connor Kelly, Drew Snyder and Ben Reeves, and they were such key guys to our offense, and it sucks to see them go, because we had such a good, you know, relationship on and off the field with, you know, hanging out, and, you know, our chemistry on the field was amazing. So, you know, seeing some of these guys, you know, go stinks, but obviously, you know, they're some of the top players in the world, and, you know, they're some of the best in the league. That's why uh, the Water Dogs picked them up, and it's gonna stink playing the Water Dogs, because, I would love them on my side because they were such great friends and teammates and players that, you know, it, it stinks, but I'm proud of them and I hope they do the best and I, I only can wish them the best going forward for theirs. So, you know, good luck, but now it's time for, you know, other guys on the Whip Snakes to step up. We're super excited and, uh, you know, go Whip Snakes. It sounds to me like the MVP isn't worried about anything when it comes to his offense. Rambo has been going full beast mode this offseason with his workout, so get ready to see an even stronger Whips offense in 2020. 
All right, we've covered the offensive side of the ball, but let's talk about the unit that Jim Stagnita has put the most trust in as he protected every single defensive starter. Man, I feel for the offenses that have to start matching up against these guys starting this month. Michael Earhart, Tim Muller, Matt Dunn, Jake Bernhardt, Tyler Warner, Bryce Young. Man, this Whip Snakes defense is scary, man. And we're gonna bring on Matt Dunn in particular to talk about how this defensive unit is gonna contribute to the Whip Snakes. Going for that repeat this summer. You know, in the offseason, we were faced with some really tough decisions around our protected roster, and we ended up going with our defense. I think ultimately, we kind of looked at the defense as our backbone for last year. We're all super comfortable playing together, and it's hard to find that. So if you lose, you know, one defensive starter and you have to go find somebody to replace them, it's not always that easy because a team starts just completely attacking that player and then all of a sudden, you know, your defense is only as strong as its weakest link. So we felt like we were really strong there and we didn't really want to see any of those guys go. I, I, I do think the decision to protect our defense will pan out for us this summer um, just because in a short tournament like this, we're really going to rely on our defense with not a lot of time to game plan or make any adjustments um, that we might need to make. We're going to have to rely on instinct and trusting each other and do quick adjustments that we know we can make given our history of playing together. So having a defense that's able to communicate well and trust each other is going to be huge for a tournament like this. The role of the short stick team midi is going to be really big. Um, and it always is because short stick team midis are the most underappreciated position on the field. And, you know, offenses just like to attack the short stick D midi. We have three guys this year that I think are going to be really critical in our success. And they're, and they're all great, you know, great players on the ball, good at pushing transition, can play team defense. And that's Jake Bernhardt, Ty Warner, and a nice offseason pickup for us, TJ Camizio. Um, those guys are going to be massive in our success because, you know, having short stick D midis that can cover the ball allows the rest of the defense to not have to worry about always showing support and helping and hedging off guys, leaving guys open. It's hard to say if one attack line really poses the biggest threat to our unit but you know we like to pride ourselves in thinking that we can stop any of them we have a lot of confidence in our defensive unit and our three guys down low myself Bryce Young Tim Muller and all being able to fill multiple roles whether it's one of us covering the ball that game or two or three of us covering the ball depending on what the opposing attack line has two or three of us you know we all think we can play off the ball as well so just being very versatile there and being able to mesh and fit whatever role we need and trying to give up shots Kyle wants to see because we know I'll make those stops the championship series will be very challenging for every defense and we feel very confident in ours because we got a good core of returners coming back and guys that were successful last year in helping to bring a championship to our team. I think, uh, you know, we look at ourselves as the backbone of our team and we have a ton of talent on the offensive side of the ball, but at the end of the day, we have to be consistent in getting the ball to the offense. Um, I think we have a group that can do that because we have a lot of guys that are willing to, like I mentioned, fill their role. Nobody on our defense wants anything more than to get a win, right? Get a win, do our job, get the ball to the offense and get a win. And that's really important because we don't have guys trying to get takeaway statistics or trying to pass their stats in any way. No guys who ego, whose egos are so big that they're not willing to switch a matchup with another guy if that might be more favorable for our defense. And so having that egoless defense allows us to play together and kind of give us that identity of team overall. And that's really, I think, important for a championship identity and really what makes us such a strong defense unit. All right, as Matt highlighted, this defensive unit is staying the same. However, the defense in particular isn't an obstacle that I see sitting in the whip's way. It's just them finishing games. I mean, do you remember how wild the whip's road to the championship was last year? Their first three games went to overtime. Whip snakes with the ball in overtime. Snyder buries the whip. Shredder in overtime for the second straight week. Hell, NBC Sports made a special this week about OT and late game finishes, and the whips were featured quite a bit. And if you haven't seen that, it's available on NBC Sports Gold exclusively. So if you haven't gotten gold yet, links down there. What are you waiting for? Go snag it now. Will the whips repeat this season? Yes or no? Let us know down below and why. The winner of that final whistle question this week will get this Whip Snakes Championship locker room tee. We are 11 days away from training camp. Lacrosse is almost here, people. Oh, by the way, come next week, you'll be able to fill out your own bracket for the championship series. Yes, you get to pick who you think is going to win the entire series, play against other people, yellow fans and win some dope prizes more details coming on that soon comment below to win that whips t oh and one more thing if you are a club or program and want your own custom watch party banner 
This is an example banner for one of our clubs, but you can get one that looks just like it. And you can hang it up in your living room while you gather around and watch two straight weeks of lacrosse. Link down below if you're a club that wants to get one. We'll see you next week. Damn. I can't believe I punched my phone.